Uh, thanks everyone for coming here. Uh, my name is Stevenson Fergus. I'm a faculty member uh, in the School of Kinesiology and Health Studies. I'm the incoming undergraduate chair. Uh, and so really excited to welcome you to Queens, welcome you to SKHS. It's a really exciting time and we're really looking forward to meeting you and, and introducing you to, uh, to every everything that we have to offer, offer in the school. Uh, before I get started, I just want to have uh, some of the other participants uh, introduce themselves. So um, Vanessa, if you want to. Sure. Hi, everybody. Welcome and thank you for coming. My name is Vanessa McCourt. I am the academic advisor in the School of Kinesiology and Health Studies, so probably a lot of the emails you have received so far have come from me, and I am here to help present and let you know um, all there is to know about registering for your courses for this year and um, just to be uh, assistance for you and um, answer any questions you might have. So thanks for coming. I'll pass it off to Holly. Hi everyone, my name is Holly Robinson and I am an academic and career advisor in the Faculty of Education. I'm here tonight at the very end of this presentation. Um, I'm just going to speak to some things that are specific to those of you who, who were accepted into the um, Kinesiology Concurrent Education Program. So and if anybody's out there who's a Con Eddie, um, I'm going to say some things at the very end that's specific just for Con Ed students. Um, and I'm Kayla Hackard. Um, I'm a kinesiology student. I'm going into my last year and I also work for the Faculty of Arts and Science in their Student Services Division. And I look over the PASS advising, which is advising specifically for first years like you guys. Awesome. So the point of this uh, webinar today, we're going to go through registration, sort of a big complicated process that you'll go through several, several times while you're at Queen's. Uh, and we try to do our best to make it um, understandable, but it can be quite a bureaucratic and, and complicated topic. So if you have questions, don't feel bad. Uh, we'll leave some time at the end for uh, Q&A uh, in this webinar, but just uh, be aware as well that the, the Faculty of Arts and Science, uh, they have this first year registration guide and you can either use this uh, QR code or just go to QUArtsci.com getting started. And it includes a lot of the information that you'll uh, that you'll need as well. We are recording today's webinar and we'll, we'll make that available uh, in OnQ, OnQ being the learning management platform that you'll become familiar with uh, through all of your courses uh, at Queens. Uh, and just to let you know, there's another session that's gonna be happening um, after you've gone through the, re the re registration guide. If you have any questions, it's a Q&A session on Zoom. It's lined up for Friday, uh, the 21st of so this coming Friday from nine to 11.30 and one to 3.30. Uh, and this would be just drop in at any time during those those hours uh, and ask your questions. So we'll have uh, a Vanessa and, and um, I will be taking some of that as well uh, to answer your questions one on one. So uh, another good opportunity if you have any questions uh, before uh, registration begins. So I think um, we can move on. And so um, you'll definitely learn at Queens. There's a lot of terminology that we use. Uh, that can seem confusing or unclear as a, as a first year student. And so uh, we'll try to try to break it down and, and sort of go over some of the, the basics. Uh, and so program plan, term, unit, you'll hear us using these terms. Uh, and so just be aware when we talk about a, about a program, we're talking about uh, the degree that you're getting. And so um, you are all kinesiology students. Uh, and so your program is a Bachelor of Science Honors. So that, that's the degree that, that you'll receive. Uh, the plan is your major or what you're concentrating in. And in kinesiology, we actually, it's a little bit different from a major. It's called a specialization uh, to recognize or to, to show that you actually have more degree requirements uh, than a major would have. And so that's your plan that you'll be in. Uh, term, you will also hear it um, called a session or a semester. Our academic uh, year at Queens, it's divided up into three terms, uh, fall, winter, and, and summer. You'll be taking courses in the fall. Uh, you'll be taking courses in the winter. There are some courses then that are available in the summer for students who want to sort of um, get caught up or, or uh, go ahead. Uh, but for the most part, uh, students take all of their courses in the fall and in the winter. And then you'll hear us talk about academic units. And a unit, every time you take a class, the class is specified as having a particular number of units or 
uh, or uh, weight. And so most single term classes that you'll take uh, are three units in weight. And so a full course load would be five uh, courses in a term, which would mean you'd be registered and you'd receive 15 units. Now just be aware that most of the courses are one term. And so that three credit um, op the three credits that you would get, but then there are also some courses, a uh, couple that you'll, you'll be taking uh, that actually meet uh, in two, two terms. So it's a, a, we used to call it a full full class, but it's, it's a class that meets in the fall and in the winter, and you would receive uh, three credits for the fall and then three credits for the winter. So that's a, a six credit course. I think we can move on. All right, and then just as I said, so the kinesiology degree, it's actually not a major, it's known as a specialization. Uh, and what that means is that you have 120 units that you have to complete in order to get your degree. So 120 of those, as I said, most courses are made up of three credits. Uh, there are core courses that add up to 51 units that you'll be taking. Uh, you'll have options uh, from within. So we, we talk about HLTH and, and KNPE. So we're the School of Kinesiology and health studies within the Faculty of Arts and Science. And the two programs that we have uh, are a health program, a health studies program, and the kinesiology program, which you will be part of. Um, and so all of, any course that falls within our health studies program uh, has the distinction of being HLTH and then the number of the course, whereas uh, the kinesiology pro courses uh, all have the, the header, the, the are distinct, are marked or, or shown by the, the, the um, I don't know what you call that, the the, uh, the course code will be KNPE. And so within the school, you will be taking 27 units, either on the health or the physiology side. Uh, you're required to take 24 units from the natural or physical sciences from, from elsewhere at uh, other departments at Queens. Uh, and then you have electives. So you have 18 units uh, in which you'll be able to take whatever course that you want from across the entire uh, Faculty of Arts and Science. Um, to, to fill up and then to get those 120 units that you'll have uh, uh, that you need then to graduate. All right, and just one thing to know, and this is um, one, you know, the, our kinesiology program, it's unique within the faculty. It's also unique within our school in that uh, you're coming in as first year students, you're already uh, within, or you're already in the kinesiology program. We call it a direct entry program. Most programs in the Faculty of Arts and Science, including the Health Studies program, are not direct entry. So students come in as uh, arts or as science students, and then at the end of the first year, they then declare their major. So you are already sort of one step ahead. You are already in this specialization of kinesiology. And so that what that means is then that we, we, we can sort of help you um, help you by pre-registering the courses that you'll be taking in your first year. So, you know, we know what the program is. And so we're putting you in the the, the courses that you'll need to, to then continue on in the program. Uh, and so in the fall term, you'll be registered for four classes. You'll be registered for a health 101, which is the social determinants of health, uh, KNPE 153, an introductory biomechanics class. And then uh, you'll be taking Psych 100, and we've also registered you for biology um, 102. As if you remember from the previous slide, I, I said that you need to take a certain number of natural and physical sciences. And this is one course that a lot of our first year kinesiology students take um, to start fulfilling that requirement. And then you have a choice of what you want to take for the final three. So as I said, a full course load is 15 credits. Um, one thing you'll, you'll notice here, I mentioned that some courses uh, meet over two different terms and the Psych 100, that's what's happening there is that you'll be registered for it in the fall uh, and in the winter term, uh, as well as the uh, biology courses, those are also two, two, um, two terms long. Uh, in the winter then, you'll also be registered for KNPE 125 or Introduction to Human Physiology as well as KNPE 167, the sociocultural dimensions of sport and physical activity. All right, so then I'm gonna turn it over to Vanessa, as I, I mentioned, this is my I, incoming um, graduate or undergraduate uh, chair. I have been in the school since 2005, so I've been here quite a long time, but this is a new role for me. And so I'm learning a lot of these registration things as, as we go along, so Vanessa, um, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Steve. 
Um, so I'm going to take the next 15 minutes or so just to talk about how you can choose your first year classes. And if you were just reading the Q&A, you'll see that somebody did ask, do I enroll in those courses that Steve just mentioned? No, you do not. Um, I've had a, a couple of uh, students already email me that but and wondering why they can't put those courses in their shopping cart. Um, they're already pre-enrolled for you. So you don't have to touch those courses. They're already on your timetable. You'll be able to see those courses is on your timetable right now. The only thing you have to worry about is that one course in the fall and the one course in the winter. Um, or if you want to take a six unit course, uh, Chem 112, for example, Chemistry 112, it is a full year course. So then you would enroll in that course only. You'd have to enroll in both the fall and the winter term. Um, but that is the only course that you need courses um, that you need to enroll in this year. The rest have been pre-enrolled for you. The only, we put an asterisk beside the biologies, 102 and 103. Those are, uh, I guess you could say option courses. We recommend that students take both of those biology courses, but you don't have to take both of those if you really don't want to take those biology courses. You can swap those courses, uh, either one or the other or both for uh, two other courses if you want, but we do recommend that students take them because they are introductory science courses. And like we said, you need 24 units of physical natural science courses anyway. So here we go. So basically, um, we are pushing everybody to the first year registration guide. It has a lot of great information about how to pick your courses, um, the webinars, and for important information about um, the dates, registration dates, that we have a bunch of different dates uh, around registration. So really um, use this guide to pick your courses um, to figure out what's being offered this year for you. Um, the um, this choosing your courses option. So um, you can pick on the that red button, pick the right courses for your plan. Um, so basically you will have a lot of core courses already that you have to take for the kinesiology plan. Um, so you won't need to use that as much as somebody who's maybe has to pick a major after after first year. Um, but you can use that to, to try and gauge your interests. I, I get a lot of students asking me, well, what courses should I pick? And it's really up to you. You, you do have a lot of choice, even though you, you do have a lot of core courses and it's a specialization. You have choices in the natural physical science courses you can take, and you also have a lot of choice in the electives. Those six courses um, are really wide open for what you want to, what what you're interested in, and what you want to take. So use that um, pick the right courses button and and help allow that to help guide you in terms of what courses you may want to take. So the um, step is. So first step is you can review the recommended courses by plan. And then step two is um, courses for first year students. So this will take you to a web page. Um, first year students can only take 100 level courses. You can't take 200 level, 300 level. You'll, you'll get there eventually. But for first year, you can only take 100 level courses. So some of those courses are, are introductory courses. When you get into second and third year, you can be a bit more specific and take, you know, um, very variations on psychology, for example, but typically most courses in first year is either one course or two courses um, and, and just give kind of an intro, intro to that subject area. And then the other important um, piece of the guide that I uh, uh, mentioned earlier is the, um, the registration date. So, um, Keep these dates handy. Um, they're very important. A lot of students ask me, when can I register? When can I put courses into my shopping cart? So these dates, um, pay attention to those. Um, so the 15th, so that was Monday, you were able to, at that point, view your enrollment time. And I will be going through that in a, in a few slides, how to do that. And you're also able to put the courses into your shopping cart. Um, your date is on July 22nd, I believe, Bachelor of Science. Um, so you'll be able to start enrolling in your courses on that date. And then again, you're given your enrollment time on Solus. Um, 
Also pay attention to the July 30th date. That is a pause day. There's no um, registration that can happen on that date. Um, but July 31st is an open enrollment. So if, for example, if there was an arts course that you wanted to take that you weren't able to enroll in, um, you would you are able to take um, courses in, in other plans um, on. So for, for first year students, it's July 29th, the classes are reserved. Um, and so you can add arts courses on that date and then vice versa, art, art students can add science courses on the 29th. Um, and then there's also a registration hiatus. So between August 5th and 18th, there's no registration. So um, you won't be able to add a course, swap a course, do anything at that time. The other thing I wanna mention um, on your day, you will be able to swap a tutorial. I've been getting a few questions from first year students, our varsity athletes, for example, who say I have practice in, in the evening and it conflicts with my, la my biology lab, for example, can I move it? So yes, you can move a lab or a tutorial section, but you have to um, wait until your enrollment time to do that. Okay. So just some things to think about when you're picking your courses. Um, the timetabling is this, is this puzzle. Um, it can be very complicated, um, especially if you're trying to timetable a six unit course, for example, Chem 112, you might find that everything works in the winter term, it fits in your schedule perfectly, and then you move to the winter, sorry, fall term, and then you move to the winter term, and now you have a course, a different course that wasn't there in the fall, and now it conflicts. So you just have to kind of be patient, trial and error, um, try, you know, try different lab, lecture, lab, lecture, tutorial sections, um, just to see uh, which ones will work. I don't think we mentioned what a lab is, what a tutorial is. So basically all of your courses, most of your first year courses are quite large, between three and 400 students, especially like a, a Psych 100, um, the Health 101 course, for example. So most of those large courses have a lecture, but they also have either a tutorial or a lab component tied to that course. And those um, tutorials labs are meant for smaller classes. So most of them are 25 to 30 students. And the um, they're taught by most often a teaching assistant. So a student who's either in their master's or a PhD. And it's a, it's a time for the teaching assistant or TA and the students to either review the material that was taught in the lecture, to answer any questions that you might not have felt comfortable asking in the lecture, um, you know, going over maybe new material or going deeper into the lecture material. So, um, so if there is a tutorial or a lab component tied to the lecture, make sure you're also choosing that as well. So some things to think about when you are um, trying to timetable those courses, th that extra one course per term. Um, Make sure you have five courses. So a full full term, full time student takes five courses in the fall, five in the winter, or fifteen units per term. That um, that's a considered full time. So that would be thirty units per year over four years is the one hundred and twenty units. Make sure you're registering for your fall and winter term. I do get some students who don't think they think there's a next, you know, a, a new uh, registration period for winter term, but that's not the case. You can register for both terms on your enrollment day in, um, next week. Back to back classes are OK. Some students panic and think, oh, I have a class that starts at 130. Sorry, what ends at 1.30 and then another class that starts at 1.30. That's okay. It's not a course conflict. Um, your first class always gets out 10 minutes early. So it would get out at 1.20 and then give you 10 minutes to get to your next class, which is usually enough time to get across campus. The only thing you need to maybe pay attention to is if any of your courses are... Um, are programmed or timetabled on West Campus, Duncan MacArthur Hall. Um, that take would take you a bit longer to get to that, but I don't believe we pre-enrolled any students into any courses on Duncan MacArthur Hall. I, I'm sure they're all on main campus. Um, 
plan breaks in your day. For some reason, Wednesdays always seem to be a busy day. I don't know why timetabling does that, but um, we do have night classes. You can have classes anytime between 8.30 a.m. and I believe 8.30, 9 o'clock p.m. Um, so if you can try not to have, um, you know, back to back to back classes all in one day, try to sp spread it out as, as much as you can. Um, plan for a plan B. So there might be times where you really want to take a course and it just doesn't fit in your schedule. There's a time overlap. Um, don't worry. You can, you know, make note of that course. You can always take it in another year. Um, when you get into second year, third year, fourth year, you can take courses in first year, second year. You can take courses below you. So um, just don't stress and think, oh, I, I won't be able to take this course ever. That's not the case. You, you should be able to take the course, hopefully at some point in your undergrad. And um, that new this year, and I'm hoping that it will be helpful for all of you, is an on-cue course page. So um, when you go to um, the Queen's Main website, you'll see um, a, a drop-down menu in the top. Uh, right hand corner and I think it's about three down it says on cue so click on that and and that you'll get very familiar with um, on cue that's where all of your courses will post all of their material their syllabus course outline all of that so we've created um, a quote unquote course for students called SKHS undergrad so that's there now that now has information about um, registration a lot of what have I, I've just talked to you about is posted there I'm holding zoom drop-in sessions this week and, and next week just one-on-one -on -one if you have a quick question so the zoom link is is posted there information about orientation will be posted there the kinesiology orientation so make sure you um, check that out if you haven't yet there's a lot of good information on that on Q course page. Okay, so you've gone in, you've picked the one course from fall and winter terms, or you've picked Chem 112 if that's the course you want to take. Now, how do you register into the course? So this is where I was talking about the on cue page. Um, so you you'll be going to, it's called Solis Student Center. This is the, the main Queen's webpage. And so you would click the sign in and then it'll bring you to a drop down, drop down menu. And then you would pick my Queen's U, Solis, HR and more. Make sure you use your email. Your Queen's email is also the same as your net ID and um, your password is the same for both. So this just gives the example, your Queen's email is that um, num collection of numbers and letters, then your net ID is the numbers and letters before at Queen's U. So that is your net ID and um, your password and that will sign you into Solus. And then when you get here, you just pick that top gray button there, click on that that says Solus. So this will, this will get you to the um, main page of Solus. And on the left hand side, these are the, they're called tiles. So each one of these tiles enables you to do something differently. Um, so to pick your course, or sorry, we're now talking first enrollment time. So if you haven't already gone here and you don't know your enrollment time, this is just showing you um, how to get to your enrollment time and um, the day and time that you'll be able to pick your courses. So how it works is um, enrollment time start at 9 a.m. First year, first year students are all on the same day. So um, this um, this one actually isn't correct. It's, um, I, I believe it's July 22nd. This is just giving an example, but on the 22nd, all first year students in, in, the, in the science program start at 9 a.m. and then you're given a time. It's just random lottery every 20 minutes. I think they say about four to 500 students get a new time. So hopefully if your time is later this year, you get an earlier time next year, but it is just random. We can't change it. Um, and, um, but yeah, hopefully the courses are still, should be um, lots of room still left in the courses for you to enroll. So you just pick, click on that manage classes and then enrollment dates, and then you should be able to see your date and time.
Okay, so first you have to pick your term. So when you're adding your courses, um, you, can, you can click on the class search and enroll and make sure you do click fall, pick your course. And then um, after you've picked your course, come back and change your term to the winter term. It doesn't automatically just enroll you in the B portion. If it is Chem 112, you have to go back, pick the winter term and then add your course again. Um, when you click on class search and enroll, you can either click on the key, you can type in the keyword or um, the course code. So for example, if you're thinking Chem 112, you can type in C-H-E-M space, make sure there's a space or Solus doesn't, doesn't recognize it, 112, and then it will populate, give you all of the lecture lab uh, times associated with Chem 112 in the term that you chose. So if it's fall term, it will give you all of the options for the fall term. The other way you can look for a class, if you don't know what class you wanna take um, or what's offered or what's available to first year students, you can click on additional ways to search and it brings you, um, gives you a drop down menu. Um, and then you can click on the down arrow and it um, shows you all of the course titles, I guess, or departments. At Queen. So not all of those courses um, offer first year courses, but it gives you a sense of um, what different subject areas departments are at Queens. Um, you know, there's astronomy and there's geography, history, um, epidemiology. So lots and lots of um, subject areas. And so you can just do um, a search through there and and see what kinds of topic areas might be of interest to you. Okay, so this is where I was um, just explaining. So um, yeah, alphabetical. So for example, aging and health, there might not be courses available to you in first year. Um, but again, this just gives you a sense of, of what topics might be um, might be of interest. And maybe what if you can't take it this year, there might be courses or course uh, subject areas that you'll be able to take in upper years, um, biochemistry, for example, um, there's a 200 level course health biochemical basis of health and disease is very popular. A lot of uh, kinesiology students will take that course in second or third year. So when you've typed in a course, have found the course, this is using biology as the example. Uh, you will already be enrolled in that, but this is just you showing you um, what will come up when you type in biology. So this is just, um, just shows you the different biology courses. So um, somebody must have just searched biology, B-I-O-L, and then these are the courses that came up. So these courses are being offered for example, would be offered this year in the fall term. And the red boxes on the left just show you that um, there's filters that you can use when you're searching for your courses. So if you just click on undergraduate, then only the undergraduate courses will come up. If you just click on um, class meeting days, if you just click, you know, all the days except Monday, then it will only show you the courses that are available on those days, um, not the courses on Monday. So you can play around with that filter function. Um, you know, some students don't want an evening course, so they might click off that they, you know, they don't want um, courses beyond four o'clock or whatever. So just, um, just another feature uh, for you to be aware of. Okay, so when you click on the actual course, so in this example, the student has clicked on Bio 102. This will give you all of the options that are available to you. And it shows you the lecture and the lab combination. It shows you um, the status, so make sure your the status says open. It'll either say um, closed or um, maybe wait list only. So if those, you won't be able to enroll in a, in a course if it's already closed. So um, as you get you know into third and fourth year, when it comes your enrollment time, there might be some courses that already say closed when it comes your time to enroll. Um, so just know that you, SOLIS won't let you enroll in that course. 
Um, also make sure, pay attention to the day and time. So when you have your course calendar um, out and either, you know, if you use computer or a, a paper and pencil copy, you know, make sure you have your Monday to Friday, have your courses already, um, you know, laid out so you know what time they are, are at and what day. And then that allows you to be prepared so there's no course conflicts when you're choosing your other two courses. Um, so so the day and the time that tells you, you know, the biology 102 lecture is um, offered or is being offered Wednesday and Friday. And then the lab is Monday, 6.30 to 8. And the rooms are there. Um, and then it will tell you how many open seats there are still available. So to add the course, you would click on the course and um, it will show you. So add to wait list if class is full. You can, there is the option to do that. So you can just click um, on the no and it will move to yes. So if you really want this course, it's not so much in first year. Most of the courses should still have space for you. Um, but as you are getting into second, third and fourth year, you may want to be on the wait add, added to the wait list if the course is full. So you would just click yes um, on that button and then you would click um, next or sorry, first accept. And then you would click the next button because Solus just asks you, do you want to be enrolled in this class? Um, it, it asks you like twice. So I guess it's just to make sure that you do actually want this class. So right now, this just is telling you that you can't actually yet enroll in the class until your enrollment day and time. Um, so if you want to add the courses now, you can, but it's just adding them to your shopping cart. It's not actually enrolling you. You have to wait until um, the 22nd to do that. So if you are wanting, it's fine to do it now. You um, can add them to the shopping cart. You can also just wait until your enrollment time and click enroll. Um, but this is just showing you the option you have right now um, to add the course to your shopping cart and then you click next. And then um, you hit submit. So then submit means this, you're not yet enrolled. Like I said, right now you are just um, adding the course to your shopping cart um, and waiting for your enrollment day next week. So when it comes time for you to enroll, then it basically you come back into your shopping cart and you click click the class that you want to now enroll in and then you just uh, hit the enroll button there. So I was gonna say, hopefully this is easy and everything is very stress-free for you, but sometimes you do run into some issues. Um, so these just list kind of maybe what might've went wrong um, for you. So like I said, there might be a timetable conflict. You might not have noticed, um, like I said, in the winter term, if you um, clicked on, if you wanted to take Chem 112, and the A section looked fine in your calendar, but then you move to the B section. Oops, shoot, now there's a new course that's timetabled that overlaps in it, even if it's overlapping by a half an hour. Um, so this won't let you enroll in it. You have to be in both classes. You can't have a course conflict um, with two classes because obviously you need to be in the one class until the class is over. And then um, so, so you can try and find another section that works for your uh, winter term. Um, but it so this won't allow you to enroll in the class. The class might be reserved. Um, so like we were saying, some of the arts courses, if you're thinking about a history class, um, you know, a social sciences or a humanities course, um, those courses might be reserved, will be reserved right now for students who are in the Bachelor of Arts plan. So you'll have to wait until the 29th to be able to enroll in that class. Um, class or section is full. So again, it says open seats during, um, you know, right now when you had put the course into your shopping cart, it said open, but shoot, now you have, um, you know, maybe your enrollment time is four o'clock on the 22nd. Now that class is full that you had originally planned um, to take in, and that was in your shopping cart. So now you'll again have to find another um, 
lecture lab or lecture tutorial section that does have remaining seats. And sometimes it's just scrolling down to see all of the options. Um, some of the larger courses, Psych 100, Chem 112, students say, oh, I, you know, I went down to the, the first page, but there are like hundreds of lecture lab combinations in those larger courses. So you might just have to keep scrolling to see um, which one will fit into your schedule. Um, and this isn't as much for you in first year because you can only take 100 level courses, but sometimes when students get into second, third or fourth year, um, they haven't yet satisfied a prerequisite or a co-requisite. That just means they needed to take a certain course as a prerequisite in order to take an upper year course, and they haven't done that yet. So um, this actually, maybe after um, later on in the summer, you can start looking at upper year courses in second year and third year that you might want to take to see if there are actually prerequisites tied to that course um, that you would need and maybe think about taking those in third year or sorry in second year so that enables you to take the course in third year or fourth year. So just thinking sorry I'm just going to take a break here. So when you think everything looks good you were enrolled in your classes are you done? Uh, make sure that you have five courses per term. Um, that's a to be uh, full time. Um, if you are thinking about, you know, maybe five is too difficult. Perhaps you're a varsity athlete, or you have other, um, you know, other commitments um, that that. Maybe um, you might not think you can handle five courses. That's totally fine to drop down to four. Just make sure um, you're picking up that fifth course either in um, the summer term or you might have to take a sixth course in a term in, in an upper year. Um, and make sure if you're getting a scholarship or a bursary, um, if you're getting additional funding, make sure you know the parameters, if there's any regulations, stipulations around that funding um, um, that, that maybe doesn't enable you to drop down or, you know, drop your courses. Make sure you know that before you decide to drop a course. Okay, so some of you may have taken either AP credits or IB courses in high school and um, wondering what that process is for transferring those credits to your Queen's transcript. So this is the website um, that you should go to. Um, you click on about applying the tab and there's a down arrow there. And then this transfer, oops, sorry, transfer credits um, page will come up and this will um, allow you to type in the course that you had taken and how that transfers over to your Queen's transcript. And you have until the end of fall term to submit a form. So this, this uh, page has an online form that you can fill out and submit it to our undergrad admissions office and they will review those uh, transfer credits and then update your Queen's transcript. So I would suggest doing it sooner than later so you don't forget about it. But um, yes, you do have until um, I believe it's the, the first week of December to, um, to submit that form. Okay, so I mentioned the our on Q course. There's another on Q course that will be coming to your on Q page, um, August eighth, Academics one hundred and one. It's an online asynchronous course that uh, prepares you for the academic um, rigor, or I guess you should you could say um, for Queens. I I meet with hundreds of students every year. Some of them are very prepared. Some of them are not prepared for university lectures, um, the amount of reading you have to do, the amount of uh, free time you have, how to juggle your academics with sports, extracurriculars, social life, 
um, avoiding procrastination. So this course is very helpful um, and, and it's laid out like any other Queen's course, um, but it just gives you a lot of great information about preparing for Queen's and your academic journey. So I just wanted to put a plug in for a few opportunities that we have available to our uh, students in upper years. Um, the mini streams are very popular and a lot of our students um, apply to these mini streams after their first year. So we have three, we have athletic therapy, strength and conditioning and a research mini stream. So like I said, you apply in March of uh, your first year and we have about 25 seats in both the athletic therapy and strength and conditioning uh, mini streams. And I would say maybe around that for research as well. Um, you basically, uh, you submit your resume cover letter and then we also look at your transcripts. So make sure you're doing as well as you can in first year to be eligible and um, competitive for those mini streams. Athletic therapy is the mini stream where you're paired with a varsity team and you are, um, you take uh, athletic, injuries, they call it the taping course. I'm just trying to remember the actual title of it. Um, it's not coming to me, sorry. Um, basically you're learning about athletic injuries, how to tape those, how to treat them. So you take that course in your second year and then your third and your fourth year, you're paired with an athletic team and a varsity team and you're attending their practices and their games and being there in case um, an athlete gets injured. And then you're sort of first on the scene to assess their injury and to treat the injury. The strength and conditioning is the other mini stream. And again, you're paired with a varsity team and you're helping the team in the gym with their, um, their uh, weightlifting, uh, working out, um, and you know, getting them at um, their top athletic um, performance for their sport. So um, both of them are quite popular. A lot of our kinesiology students love it. You get course credit in third and fourth year for those courses as well. The second opportunity is our certificate in disability and physical activity. So the certificate is five courses. Two of the courses count in your kinesiology degree, and then three of the courses are over and above your degree. So you actually end up taking 129 units, getting your, your um, bachelor's degree, as well as your certificate in disability and physical activity. With the certificate, you are... Um, working with our community members in our revved up gym, it's called. It's on the fifth floor of our building. And community members come in and um, either, you know, they may have had a stroke, they may have had an injury, um, or they just, um, they don't feel welcome in a regular quote unquote gym and want to work one on one with our trained students and volunteers. And so you're working with the community members to come up with a, um, a you know, a workout plan to meet their goals. And then you assist them lifting weights and making sure that that they're not injuring or re injuring themselves. So um, you get again, you get course credit and um, a certificate for that program. Um, third year, we have a community-based practicum. So you choose the, um, the organization that you want to work in and you go there one day a week in the winter term of third year. So it pretty, pretty well has to be an organization in uh, Kingston, um, but you are, so and it really just depends on maybe your career aspirations, your interests, where you might like to work um, to, to just try out that workplace for a day. So in the past, we've had students working at um, hospitals, physiotherapy clinics, occupational, working with an occupational therapist, long-term care homes, YMCA, boys and girls clubs. So um, that one is quite a popular one because it gives you hands-on experience in um, working in a workplace, a workplace setting that, you know, might, you might want to um, uh, get a job in at uh, one point. And our last opportunity, and this one is also quite popular, is our international exchange. So, um, 
many of our kinesiology students decide to do an international exchange in their third year. So typically uh, you go in the winter term of your third year. So by third year, you don't have as many core courses that, that you have to take. A lot Your schedule really opens up and you um, choose most of your courses. You only have one core course that you have to take in the fall term. So that opens your schedule up to, to do an international exchange. And um, if you want more information, I can send you that. I can send you to the website. Um, but um, it's, it's again, an application. They're looking at your transcript as well as a written ap application and making decisions um, in the January of your second term. Okay, so if you have questions or you run into any issues, um, I've listed my information here. Um, again, the first year guide is very helpful. If you have email, so email, I tend to get upwards of 200 emails uh, per day next week. So if it is something that is kind of pressing you, you know, you're, you're on Solis picking your courses, something comes up, the better option might be either telephone or my one-on-one -on -one advising drop, Zoom drop-in session. So those links and times are posted there and the link is posted in the OnQ SKHS undergrad page. So um, that's probably the easiest way to meet with me to get your question answered. We also have a first year hotline for all arts and science students. Um, so that uh, number is listed there. You're put into a queue. Hopefully you don't have to wait too long to get your question answered, but just know email can be a bit slow next week. If um, you need a quick answer, that might not be the best option. Okay, so I'm not sure Michael is on. I'm not seeing him. Okay. So I'll just quickly talk about orientation. Um, I think there was a picture here, yes. So kin orientation, kinesiology orientation, you as a kinesiology first year um, student, you have your own orientation. So students love this. Um, it is over two weekends. Um, and the first weekend you're on campus. Um, and then the second weekend you go to a uh, camp. And so you're bused. Friday, you sleep, or sorry, Saturday morning, I think it's sleepover one night. Um, Kayla, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't really know much about camp, but um, so I believe it's one night, maybe two nights that you're at camp. Um, so the goals of orientation is to create friendships, get to know the other 200 or so kinesiology students, familiarize yourself with campus and the resources that are available to you and just learn all there is to know about kinesiology. You'll meet with faculty members uh, who teach in kinesiology and health studies. You'll meet with some staff as well. So it's just a really good way to just orientate yourself to all things Queens and kinesiology. And there are some activities that are listed there, campfire talent show in the camp. So it is quite fun and very memorable for all of our kinesiology students. And uh, just a bit about registration. You should have received an email today. Check your on, um, sorry, your Queen's U email account um, for information about registering. You can either um, find it in your email. It's also posted on our website or the orientation website. There are limited tickets. I've been told that they don't really sell out, but um, the overnight trip is quite popular. So um, make sure you get your ticket early. But if you um, don't aren't able to get an overnight ticket or you just don't feel like going overnight, you're able to purchase the day trip ticket because there will be buses that are driving up and then coming back in the evening. So you don't have to stay over, but you, you can still participate in the day. And there's also three mandatory waivers that you also have to fill out. So make sure you um, see those and fill those out as well. And the FAQ. So I, I'm not too sure about these. I think, yes, I'm sure you'll still be able to see your friends and other faculties. Um, there's a lot of cross, um, you know, 
see, you know, there's there's activities that are done with other faculties. Um, they share in the in the events. So I'm sure you'll be able to see your friends. If you're a varsity athlete, you will you can participate in orientation. Um, unfortunately, some of your practices might overlap. Um, talk to your coach to see if it, if it's an option for you, but hopefully you will be able to participate. And no, it is not mandatory. You do not have to do it, but it is fun and you do get to meet other um, students in your program. Okay, so I am going to pass it over to Holly to talk about, or sorry, I guess maybe before I do that, we can answer any questions um, or finish the Q&A and, um, you know, maybe give a, a few minutes for people to ask any questions um, because not everybody has to stay in the, um, in the Zoom. This, this portion is for students who are also in the concurrent ed program. I guess I could read out these. I guess these are not answered. Um, I don't know the cost. I I would think that they would be the cost of the activities for orientation. I believe they're probably listed in the email or on um, on the website. Um, now, so it looks conscious. like Michael Michael's on the call now. So he okay. might be able to answer those questions. Yeah, can you just pop back to the orientation slide really quick, and I can just kind of go through the uh, some of the more common questions. This um, one so, or the second page? Uh, either one works. Okay, sure. Um, sorry, I'm late. I had some technical difficulties getting in. I was on the wrong Zoom account, so I didn't get the invite. Um, so I will, I'm the head coach for this year. My name is Michael. I run Orientation Week for the incoming students. Uh, so a couple of the questions, and there were a couple of pointers from Vanessa's description. So on the second weekend of school, so that would be the 6th and 7th or 7th and 8th, one of those dates of September, we go up to Camp RKY Camp, which you go up on the Saturday. There's one overnight on Saturday night, and then we come back on Sunday late afternoon so that you're back for your residence uh, conduct meetings with your floor and your residence um, if you're a varsity athlete and you have your schedule already in your training schedule, or you can request a, like talk to your coach and, um, like talk to your coach and see if you're able to get out of that. I know we've had a couple of people, at least in my year from women's basketball and men's soccer, just ask their coach to be excused. So they can be part of orientation and we'll make that happen. Otherwise there is a day trip option where we'll leave late on Saturday evening and you'll return to campus around eight or nine o'clock if you need to be there on the Sunday. Um, I'm just going to read the questions really quickly. Um, yeah, so the first question is, you tried to purchase an orientation ticket today, but it says you need to enable transfer, crypto transfer, legacy payments. Any ideas? So we're working, we got this question a lot, actually. We're working with the company that um, we're working like with guest lists to create a fix for that. It shouldn't be a problem. I will send an email. You can send an email to me at orientation.headcoach at fixa.queensu.ca. Um, I'll put it in the answer to your question. And I'll make note that you tried to purchase a ticket and then I'll send an email out or I'll have uh, Jill, the student experience director, send a blast email out saying that the issue is resolved. Um, then the cost of various activities for orientation, the overnight trip, I believe, so the both weekends and the overnight trip, I believe is $285. And the uh, one day to RKY trip is somewhere in the high hundreds, around 180, 190. Um, yeah, so that that includes all activities for orientation. So that includes you get a pair of coveralls, uh, you get a ticket to the ORT Mystery Concert, uh, you have your busing covered to and from camp, all of your food, your stay at camp, and a bunch of other awesome things that we get to do for you. Um, and if you didn't receive an e email, but orientation, um, I, I will put my email in. You can email me um, and then we will try and you'll get that sorted and I'll get you the links for that. They should also be on the Queen's Orientation website and the SKHS website.
Thank you, Michael. Okay, so I'm thinking that's it for questions for the general presentation. So thank you for coming. Um, I hope to meet most of you, all of you at some point during um, your undergrad career. And so we can close it off here, let students are, and parents who need to leave can leave. And if there are any students who are in the Kin Con Ed um, program, they're welcome to stay. And we have um, a few slides that will speak to the Con Ed portion of your degree. Thanks for coming. I just want to say looking forward to uh, meeting you all and welcoming you to uh, SKHS at Queens. Okay, so I guess I'll just take over. And so just again, just to reiterate it, in case you didn't hear, this is just very specific to concurrent education students. So there'll be a handful of people who um, are taking part in the concurrent education um, in conjunction with the kinesiology specialization program, and that this information is specifically for you um, that I will be going through. So I'm just going to, I know this is a lot of information, so I'm going to keep it pretty brief and I'm just going to touch on first year um, and just the things you should be aware of as a student in the concurrent education program and kinesiology specialization. So I think something that's really important to note, and I know we've talked about in the past, um, Vanessa talked about really clearly, was that you have five courses that you need to take. And those courses are specifically your arts and science um, kin courses. Your education courses are and will always be in your four years of undergrad in addition to those courses. So the 30 units a term, or sorry, a year, um, 15 units a term, those education courses you take are on top of that. So uh, often people will be picking their courses in first year and they'll think, okay, you're enrolled in two education courses already. We pre-enroll you every year, your entire time, within the faculty of education, you will never be enrolling in education courses yourself. We will always enroll you in those courses. Um, so it's not anything you ever have to worry about. Right now you will see in your SOLUS account, you will be enrolled in Prof 110 and EXLR 110. Those courses are specifically in addition to the five courses that you'll already be taking for your undergraduate arts and science um, courses. And so just to be clear, I know we talked about, you know, that's a lot. So you are you are doing more than somebody who's just in a general Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Arts. So you are having that additional course. Your prof class um, is a full year course like we talked about. It has an A and a B, a fall and a winter. Um, but the nice thing about that course is that it's half weight. So when we talked about each term being three units, it is a three unit course spread over an entire full year and you don't have an exam with that as well. So while it is an additional course, the workload, the course load is going to be significantly less than some of your other courses. Um, so I know if you're worried about having that extra work, it really is not the same type of work that you might be doing. It's a lot of um, group work. It's a lot of reflective practice and just talking and thinking about, you know, for all these years, you've been on the other side of the desk. So what does it mean now as a future educator to be an educator? What type of educator you'd like to be? Those kind of things are covered. So you'll have that course and you're also going to have 60 hours of placement. So the 60 hours of placement, those volunteer hours, um, that's your EXLR. So while it's a course that you take and it, you pay for that, it's not going to be timetabled in. It's self-directed. Um, and you would set that up. We will be coming, myself and the other academic and career advisors in the Faculty of Education, there's four of us all together, we'll be coming to your prof class in September and we will go into all of this information. It's, it's essentially almost your entire class. will be us talking about the Con Ed program, what it means to be in that dual program, um, and specifically your EXLR 110. What does that mean? How do you set it up? What are the types of things you can do? The entire process. So it's not something you need to worry about right now. I just want you to be aware of those being in your timetable in SOLAS and what it means when you're looking at them and see them there. Uh, I think some people have reached out because they have had some conflicts um, and we are able to move those where those conflicts exist. So 
Um, you're certainly welcome to do that when you're looking and planning your, your schedule. If something is conflicting with your prof course, you would reach out to the Faculty of Education and there'll be contact information a little bit further on. The next. Um, so specifically as students in the concurrent program, um, this program is meant for students in kinesiology to be moving into the intermediate senior stream. So whereas some people in Con Ed and other programs um, or in the general Con Ed program would have the option to be primary junior, um, as a kinesiology Con Ed student, your options are slightly limited. Um, you do have to pick intermediate senior, which is grade seven to grade 12. Um, and you are also limited to the specific teaching subjects that you will be picking. And all of that will be chosen at the end of first year. So you'll come, you'll go through first year, and in May, you'll decide, okay, what teaching subjects do I want to go with? Um, and they're just on the next page. So this is specifically the list of teaching subjects that kinesiology con ed students can choose. Everybody has to choose health and physical education. So that will be your first teaching subject, which on the other side um, was 30 units. It's built into all of the courses you have to take for kinesiology are going to cover the 30 units you need for your health and physical education teaching subject. So it's, you don't even have to think about it. You're getting everything you need for that. The 24 units you need for a second teaching subject, you'll have to get um, for either geography, mathematics, biology, or chemistry. So you'd be choosing one of those as your second teaching subject. Some of the courses you're going to take in your kinesiology program and in your plan are going to cover some of those courses, but you will have to use some electives. So just sort of putting that out there that because you have limited amount of electives, and again, we'll explain all of this in depth when we come to your class, um, it just means that sometimes you're going to be having to choose courses that are supporting your second teaching subject versus maybe taking some courses that just sound interesting because you are limited in the amount of electives you have and you do have to meet those requirements. So the nice thing about being in Con Ed and being in a dual program, so you know, you're working on uh, your Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology, but you're also working on your Bachelor of Education, is that we have four advisors in the Faculty of Education. So you have Vanessa in Kinesiology, but you also have a specific um, advisor designated for you in the Faculty of Education. Uh, we split our advisors, it's an alpha split, so the first letter of your last name will designate who's your advisor, and we will be your advisor for the entire time you're here at Queen's. So if you have a question, you're not sure where to go, we're experts on all things to do with education, how it works with your degree, your teaching sub subjects, all of that stuff. Um, but also we just, we know Queens, we know resources. So if ever you're unsure, you know, reach out Vanessa, reach out to us um, and we'll be able to help you. And so that's all of our information. And if ever you're just not sure, just email the concurrent education email and it will get to where it needs to go. So really it's just, I wanted to introduce myself, let you know that you are an education student as well. Um, there are some requirements attached to that, but you're going to be seeing our faces a lot. We're going to come to your prof class and we'll be helping you feel comfortable um, with the requirements that you need to meet while you're here in the program. And yeah, so if there's any questions, um, is the gateway course for math is my second teachable? So there are no gateway courses for teaching subjects. The nice thing about teaching subjects is you just decide. So like I said, you have to have health and physical education as your first, but you can decide whichever one you want. Um, again, you would be limited this year. Like, so you have those two elective courses. Maybe, you know, math is going to be your second teaching subject. You might want to take a math course as your elective this year in the fall or the winter term. So you would be limited to those courses you can take in first year. And then again, as you move through Queens and the years, you know, if you want to take a third year course, potentially you'll have had to take a second year course as a prerequisite to that course. So you just have to see the, the actual requirements for each individual course, which if you look at course descriptions, it will list if there's a specific um, requirement to take it. So no, there are no gateway courses for teaching subjects. You just pick the one you want even if you've taken no courses. So I just want to say that as well. If you decide you want geography as your second teaching subject at the end of the year, but you haven't taken any geography courses this year, that's fine. You can just pick those later as you move through the program. Um, and I don't think there are any other questions. Um, we're here. 
the information is there. Our contact information is there. So please reach out anytime if you have any questions. Um, we're always here to help whatever might be going on. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Have a good night.